Hey everyone, this is Brian, and uh, today we're taking a look at one of the most massive motherboards I've ever had my hands on. It's the Asus Z10PE D8WS. Super long name on this one, um, but this is the one of the best uh, motherboards I've seen, motherboard options I've seen, for building a supercharged system uh, that would be dual Xeon compatible. This is a dual Xeon motherboard. It, uh, or should I say, it's a dual processor capable motherboard. It supports Xeon architecture uh, by Intel. And uh, it also supports NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire. So the system's a little bit, you know, on the edge of being more for like high-end workstation stuff, as it says on the packaging, than it is just being a server motherboard. Um, most boards this size, uh, with this kind of processor support, they're usually just meant for you know, for servers, meaning they aren't going to have a bunch of inputs and outputs. They're not really going to have a good onboard audio chip. They're not really made to support uh, very large uh, video uh, chipsets and arrays and things along those lines. So this is a little bit different from Asus. Uh, it's a behemoth motherboard, and we're just going to talk about it a little bit. Um, and we'll kind of unbox it as we go. So um, this motherboard is a 2011 V3 socket type. So it's uh, you know one of the latest socket types from Asus, this or from Intel, should I say? Uh, the socket on this is the same one that you see on Haswell E systems as well. Um, so let's just open it up. So I have had a look in this before, so it is just a little bit ruffled up inside, but you know, I'm just going to show it to you guys. So this is the board, and uh, it's massive, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to show you everything in here, and then we'll, we'll get into the board itself. Documentation, um, you do get some SLI connectors with this one. You get a lot of SATA cables, your back plate, of course. And then you also get uh, just some add-ins for USB, video, things along those lines. And of course, you also get those SLIs. Um, so, you know, again, it's a workstation uh, motherboard. It's meant for workstation uh, work. Workstation meaning pro audio, video, things like that. Let's put the box aside. Oh, this is the board top down. Let's just talk about everything that's on it. A heck of a lot of PCI Gen 3 slots running at various speeds, uh, by 8, by 16, switchable between by 16 and by 8, and etc. The chipset that's on this board is the Intel C612 PCH chipset. Uh, it features some pretty cool things, such as the ability to support an M2 uh, drive, so it has an M2 socket 3. You've got the ability to connect up to four uh, front USB 3.0 ports, and uh, it's got eight SATA 36 gigabit ports, two SATA Express ports. It's got eight uh, memory module slots supporting up to 512 gigs of RAM. This is DDR4, so the latest and greatest RAM standard uh, that now exists out there. And that uh, can operate at 2133, 1866, 1600, and 1333 megahertz. A lot of different options and a ton of RAM that you can put in the system, up to 512 gigs, as I say. Um, pretty impressive when you really come right down to it. And as I say, dual LGA 2011-3 or V3 slots uh, for your processors. Uh, the board does have a ton of fan connectors, which I really like. There's two over here on the east side of the board. You've got three down on the south bridge, and uh, you have some additional ones up here on the north bridge. So tons of I.O. connectivity. Uh, everything is laid out pretty straightforward when you break it down uh, on the board. Your ATX power connector is back here behind this one uh, heat sink. I'm going to flip this around so you guys can see it. Got your ATX connector and you need to connect your 12 volts here. You've got two of those. So you got two 12 volts. If you're gonna use two processors, obviously you're gonna need two 12 volts and you're gonna need a beefy power supply, probably at least a thousand watts. Let's just face it, go big uh, or go home. 
Uh, I like the layout of the board in general. It's, it's a very large board. It's an EATX board, so you're going to need a case that's going to be able to support this. Remember that. You're not going to be able to put this into your average everyday case. You're going to need a big rack mount or a big desktop case, no matter what, if you're going to be able to support this thing. Uh, the RAM slots are the Asus style with a clip on one side and just a solid um, slot on the other side. I'm not crazy about those. My only reason for that is that I've had some times in, in the past where uh, RAM sticks just don't want to go into those. I don't know why, but it's not a big deal. Um, not in the long run, I don't think. Uh, we'll just show you the I.O. real quick. So uh, the panel, it's pretty straightforward, but again, there's a lot more happening here than there is on your average motherboard that is meant for servers. Um, because most server motherboards, honestly, they have maybe like three USB 2 ports and that's it. Um, and they usually all have at least dual gigabit LAN, which this one does. But there's a lot of USB 3, six USB 3 on here, as well as optical audio out uh, and your standard audio out, which is pretty cool. Two USB 2s and the old school PS2 mouse keyboard connector. So. Uh, that's pretty cool, I have to say. That's the cool thing about this board is it's got a lot of I.O. right on it, which is nice. Most of the time with server boards, like I say, you just do not get that. Um, now, again, as I, say, as I said earlier, tons of PCIe slots, but you'll notice a lack of any legacy PCI. So don't plan on using any legacy PCI with this, guys. It's just simply not going to happen. And then we'll just take a quick look down here on the south bridge, some of the connectors. Uh, we've got some VGA connectors, a COM connector, and uh, as well as an onboard power and reset button. I really like those because they're really nice for troubleshooting. Uh, we also have a LED readout. It's going to give us error codes and things along those lines. Two USB 3 front panel connectors. That's pretty cool. So you can expand even further, uh, which is pretty awesome. And of course, your TPM connector, front panel connectors, things along those lines. And then, of course, there is a ton, a ton of onboard SATA connectors. So you're going to be able to connect a lot of SATA devices to this. Um, and, you know, again, overall, I just, I think this is a really cool board. Um, I've had some issues with Asus in the past, but, you know, I'm, I'm learning to get over that as, uh, as time goes on. I like the look of it. I like the fact that the uh, heat sinks are not these huge behemoth things. You know, they're, they're there to do their job. They're not going to block things uh, incredibly. You're going to be able to use uh, different processor coolers on this, I think, without any issue because you don't have huge heat sinks blocking you and things along those lines. All that I.O. is pretty cool. The only thing to keep in mind, of course, like I say, guys, is just, you know, make sure that you get a case that's going to be well suited for this because if you don't have a case that's going to work for this, you're going to be in trouble. Um, but that said, cool board. Uh, awesome support for huge amounts of RAM, super powerful processors, things like that. So I think it's pretty cool. Comes at a pretty hefty price, of course, because it is a pretty hefty motherboard. But if you're going to be building a system like this, you've probably already decided you're going to spend a lot of money. And that's just the way it is. So there you have it, guys. Just a quick look at the Asus uh, Z10 PE-DAWS workstation dual Xeon uh processor motherboard and i hope you guys found this cool if you have questions comments anything like that please feel free to be in touch and as always thanks for tuning in until next time i'll see you guys soon and take care